Hi everybody. Confidence is an important soft skill to think about and develop, and just because you're the loudest or most social person doesn't automatically mean you have confidence. So in this video, I've created a few graphics to help us understand some concepts to keep our natural levels of confidence high and even build on the confidence that we have. Let's dive in and take a look. According to research, there's hormones associated with confidence, and they're the same hormones that are associated with happiness. We're talking dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins. Now, according to our genetics, we're each born with a certain level or amount of these hormones. Maybe somebody has a mid-level, other people have high levels of these hormones, and some people might have low levels. And throughout life and in certain circumstances, these levels are going to fluctuate just a little bit, but you're often going to return to your same natural base level of these hormones. You're not going to be able to jump to whole new levels of confidence or lose a whole bunch of confidence. You're always going to stay in about the same area according to your genetics. But we can take care of our hormones because they can get out of whack. And we might need professional help through medication to get those levels on track. But then through proper eating, sleep, and exercise, we can make sure whatever levels we have inside us naturally will be operating most effectively. Now it's important to know where our confidence comes from and how we can build on the natural levels that we already have. And I've broken it down into three areas. Uh, the parts that I can work on personally and then getting confidence through shared experiences and then gaining confidence through anything beyond that. We're going to start in the me area, but I want to zoom right into you. In fact, deep inside you, I want you to imagine that you have a confidence core. And in this core, there are people. And I encourage you to write down their names, physically write down the names of the people that are your confidence core. These are people that love you no matter what. Doesn't matter what happens to you in life. If you get fired from a job, they're going to give you a hug. If you get sick, they're going to come and visit you. No matter what, these people have your back. You should be able to write down their names. They are your confidence core. They go with you wherever you go. Now we can build on that confidence core, and one way is through education. Knowledge is power, and so a formal education will be a confidence builder for you. But learning in general, outside of school, can be a confidence builder as well. Learning about how the world works, or even about yourself. A TED talk, a podcast, watching a documentary, reading a book, taking an online personality survey to learn more about what makes you, you, can all build confidence. Skills is an easy one. If I don't know how to change the oil in my car and then I learn how to do it, that's a confidence builder. And this works with any skill. How to make your own clothes or how to make your own food, how learning a new instrument or a new language or doing renovations, learning any new skill is going to be a confidence builder. Getting physically stronger and healthier should be a confidence builder. And this is something you can track, either through a Fitbit or with some kind of an app. If you're starting an exercise at a certain weight and a week later you're lifting more weight, that proves you're getting stronger. And that should be a confidence builder. You can do the same with sleep habits or food. Removing foods from a bad list or getting more sleep and tracking that should be a confidence builder for you. The last one in the me area is what I call corrections. This is taking a step back, looking at your life, and asking yourself if there's anything that needs to be fixed or improved upon. For example, removing a bad habit or repairing a broken relationship. I can also gain confidence through shared experiences with other people. One example is being helpful. If somebody asks me for help and I give them help and I follow through with that help right to the end and it improves that other person's situation, that can be a confidence builder. But it can work in two ways. If I get help from people, now it's a little more tricky because I have to ask people for help and that's being vulnerable. Can you help me or can you spend some time with me while I do this? It's hard to do sometimes. But if I do it and then it goes back and forth, I give help, I get help, I give help, I get help, it creates a trust relationship, a relying on each other relationship and that can be a confidence builder for sure. Along the same lines is doing good deeds but I want to put the word quiet in front of it. Sometimes when we tell other people the good things we've done or post about it online, it can feel cheap or it seems like we're looking for attention. But if I just walk around looking for opportunities to do good deeds, and it's just simple things, picking up garbage, pushing the cart back at the store, bringing some treats to work when I wasn't asked to, or even opening the door for somebody or complimenting somebody, it's just me. I'm just doing it because that's kind of who I am. It can be a good source of confidence. The last topic in this shared area is food. 
this is a special topic. Uh, food is important to us. We, you know, we need it every day. And when we eat it, it impacts us right down to the molecular level. But it's also a source of confidence. I mean, it really can represent who we are, our tastes, our preferences. It can represent our culture. Sometimes when we grow our own food, even in our apartment, if I had one plant and I grew that, I nurtured that plant and I ate from it, it can be a source of confidence. But even going to the grocery store and selecting the food that I choose to select and then bringing it back and making it, preparing it in a way that I want to and eating it, knowing that I've made it, it can be a source of confidence. And if you want to double up on that, do that whole process with somebody else. And, and as you invite that person over and you have rich conversation while you make that food together and eat that food together, it's a big source of confidence, I believe. I can also build confidence in the beyond. This source of confidence is bigger than the little interactions I have with people or my community. One example is generosity. Sometimes I know where my time and money and energy goes into, but sometimes I don't. I could donate to a charity and it could impact on a large scale far beyond what I can imagine, and that could be a source of confidence. Asking and answering the question, who am I, can be a good step in building confidence. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Some people have a motto or a mantra, a little saying that captures who they are. Some people might have a tattoo that represents who they are. My suggestion is to think in values. What values do I live by, do I stand for? It could be things like compassion. I'm gonna be a compassionate person. And I encourage you to write these down, right? If I can think about these values and capture them, sometimes they're just floating around in my mind, but if I can write them down, it's kind of like a contract. It means I own these values, this is who I am. So yeah, compassion or understanding, maybe patience is who you are, wisdom or a support or a dependable person or a loving person, kindness, whatever values make up who you are try and capture them and physically write them down some people find and build confidence through spirituality certain rituals that they go through or prayers or meditations or they find their source their worth their value in something beyond themselves something you know fixed and eternal and they try and tap into that source all of those spiritual practices can be a confidence builder the idea of global citizenship can be a huge confidence builder. I highly recommend this process. You think about your behavior, your lifestyle choices, the way you live your life, and you measure it against all of humanity. And so you think, is there anything I do that causes harm to other people? Or do the things I do benefit other people? And if you can line up your behaviors and your lifestyle so that you do no harm and you benefit, then you know that you're living in a good way. Also, you can think of your uh, behaviors and your lifestyle choices and ask yourself do these things work for all people for all cultures for all time past present and future and if your lifestyle choices and behaviors do work for all people for all time again it, it's a good way to live and it should be a great source of confidence all right, those are the confidence building tips I have for you. I know there's a lot there. I hope something there was a benefit to you. And I look forward to our interview where we can talk about this a little more.